give you the most high praise. Holy, Thank you, for he alone is holy. For he alone is holy. He cries the Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you. We adore you, O oh God. At this moment, O oh Lord God, we bow at your feet, knowing full well that we can stand in your presence. For we choose to bow before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You call us friend, Lord, but we willfully choose to be a bond servant, O oh Lord Jehovah God. Better is one day in your presence than a thousand wells elsewhere, O oh God. You're greater than any riches, any wealth, oh God, and any friend, my Father. What a blessing you are, Jesus. Father God, we take this moment to thank you for the gift of remembering the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Jesus, for taking on that responsibility, coming in the flesh. Father God, we thank you. We are astounded that you so loved us that you gave us your only son, all that you had, God. You gave us everything, everything. In response to the stench of the earth, the stench of our sin, Lord. You didn't send judgment like we, we, we deserved, Lord. But you sent love, and we are thankful. We are forever thankful, oh God. Lord, as we have this service we ask that your presence oh god would abound in this place oh god and even in the hearts of the viewers oh lord jehovah god and those listening as well oh father god if they are not able to view by any chance lord maybe they are working they're doing something but they are listening oh god and lord we ask that you would reach out and reveal yourself to somebody out there oh god Indeed, Father, reveal yourself to us as well, Lord. For the more we know, the more we realize how little we know. Lord God, won't you teach us how to give back to you, how to love you. For Lord, we are forever indebted and yet we can never pay. So teach us, God, to honor you. Teach us to love you back. And teach us to glorify the Lord Jesus. And never, oh God, to bring shame to the kingdom of God. We honor you, Lord. We bow before you. Oh, Lord, would you save souls? Even as this message goes out, Lord, that the purpose of the, the, the birth and the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection would truly come alive in this Christmas. Thank you, Father. What amazing love. What amazing love. Thank you for the most beautiful gift the gift of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Uh, let me see if I can get on as well on my gadget. Give me a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to get on live so that um, I can be able to keep in sync with the comments. Um, there we go. Okay. Amen. So I'm seeing we have 39 people, and all of a sudden, oh, it's trying to interrupt the broadcast. Anyway, um, that will probably be on my side. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's wonderful to have this session. Um, you know, I was just asking the Lord that we would get a chance to have one more session, um, at least even just to discuss Christmas. It's such an important subject. Actually, other than the death of Jesus Christ, the birth was really the beginning. And it's um, the entire story of the New Testament and the New Covenant. Remember, testament also means um, covenant. And so um, it, it's important that we note that the entire story of the New Testament, of the New Covenant, is about Jesus. 
Without Jesus, there is no new covenant. And the beauty of the new covenant is the glory of God and his love for us. That the entire story of Christmas is that God so loved the world, John 3.16, that he gave his only begotten son um, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And um, I know a lot has been said about Christmas. Um, you know, one of the things that the Lord was speaking to me about um, this in the last few days was about how complicated we have made Christianity to be. And we've, we've, we've made it about always looking out for something, always um, trying to find um, something that we can, uh, you know, make complicated. And I think it's the human mind, really, at the end of the day, that we are so used to earning things that we can't believe that all this can be free. And the Lord is asking us to be simple because God is simple. Remember, Jesus was born in a manger. A manger basically is, is a place where, um, you know, cows feed. He was born in a manger. And remember, mangers are never, you know, gorofa houses and, I don't know, uh, posh places. Yeah? And that was which years, like over 2,000 years ago. So you can imagine what that place looked like. And as we um, begin this um, sermon... I just wanted to be very clear that our focus is on the glorification of Jesus Christ, our best friend, our savior, the Messiah, the redeemer, the covenant keeper, the reason for our Christian faith, the reason we are, the reason we are here today, the reason we live, the reason we move and have our being, Christ the King. The Bible tells us that if we lift up the name of Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. And so I believe that as we lift up the name of Jesus tonight, he will draw all men, women, children, boys, girls, unto himself. I want to just read us a scripture that will set the pace other than John 3.16. The other scripture I will refer to is Isaiah chapter 9 um, from verse 6. For a child will be born to us. A son will be given and the government will rest on his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Beautiful names, aren't they? Very powerful. There will be no end. Listen to this. I love this. There will be no end to the increase of his government. So when governments come and go, and people are getting caught up in, I don't know, the hype and all those things, in his government, there'll never cease to be an increase. Or of peace. So there will be no end to the increase of his government. Or of peace. On the throne of David and over his kingdom. Covenant keeper. Mentioning David. To establish it. And to uphold it. With what? Justice and righteousness. Those are the foundations of his throne. From then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Powerful scripture. That is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, that's verse 6 verse, and verse 7. Let's look at a different um, version. I love this particular version, at least just for verse 6. Verse, um, yeah, 6. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. Sounds so heavenly. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. It's a glorious God, isn't he? I'm just tempted to go into glorious God. <laughs> you know, when you begin to praise Jesus, you can't be sad. Because the moment we exalt him, he draws us unto himself. And that's the truth about Jesus. And the amazing thing with Jesus is, so many have tried to destroy his name. They tried from when he was a baby. Herod tried. So many have tried, even in the Middle East, to destroy the heritage of Israel and Palestine. And, you know, act as though it never happens. They've blown up the temple so many times, and yet it continues to come up. People have tried to write him off. In America, they 
passed laws that took him out of the schools. They passed laws that said he could not pray in public. But look at 2017, 2018. The Lord uses a man who people consider to be a fool. And they've tried to remove and to get him out, but against all odds. This man has continued to return Jesus into the institutions. I was watching a clip about um, an interview that was being done by government officials with a Planned Parenthood um, uh, uh, whatever uh, um, representative. And I, I, I just couldn't help but worship Jesus. And, you know, she was being asked, you know, if you don't know Planned Parenthood, you can Google them. But really, they are like the biggest um, people that push for the rights of, of, of you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Pro-choice. And really what pro-choice means is murder, killing little babies who have no choice. And she was asked a question and she was asked, ma'am, what happens when an abortion is attempted in a clinic and the baby comes out alive? What happens then? And she couldn't answer that question. She kept going around it. At first she said, um, it depends. Um, you know, uh, this is uh, between the, 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 the physician and, and the parent at that moment. And then they asked, ma'am, could you just let me know exactly what happens? And she was fumbling around it. And eventually, guys, she, she says, you know, we, we care first for the patient. And, and these government officials turned to her and asked, but ma'am, if the child is wounded and has come out alive, is that not the patient? I said, boom, Jesus, using anyone and everyone. The child that was born in a manger, the child that is God, the child that continues to save, continues to move, continues to reveal himself continues to appear in Muslim nations and tells them, I am Isa, and shows them the wounds. Remember, they are not scars, they are wounds. And tells them, I am Isa, I was crucified. You know, when you discuss with Muslims about um, everything to do with the Bible, you'll agree. Even on Jesus, you'll agree they call him Isa. But when you get to the place of crucifixion, they believe and they were told and have been told that he ran away or another took his place or something like that. If you look at the Ju Judaism, you can have discussions on the Torah and all those kind of things. But the moment you discuss Jesus, they can't agree with you. They say they're still waiting for the Messiah. They know the Messiah was promised, but they're still waiting for him. And so it's so exciting to see somebody like Benjamin Netanyahu suddenly has begun apparently what was an old tradition. I didn't even know that the Jews had it of studying the Bible. In, in his house, and apparently it was done before uh, in, in government buildings, and they've gone back to that. And it's just wonderful to behold what a little baby, born in a manger, walked in humility. And the Bible tells us he walked where we walk. So when he intercedes for you and I, he intercedes with understanding and with knowledge. And guys, he tells us in John 15, 15, that I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Can you imagine that? That I am a friend of God. That you are a friend of God. And all we need to do is not anything except to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. And to allow him to be born in our hearts. And then we honor him by obeying him. And even then we don't do it by ourselves. Because you know naturally we are sinful. They're just but flesh. These bodies are like smoke. They're like fog. They're like dew. They, they're like grass. Here today, gone tomorrow. If you haven't believed that and maybe you're still at that place where you're thinking I'm young, forever young or whatever, you just need to attend a funeral of a close person and watch the corpse even as you say goodbye. And it's amazing that this person who was there yesterday, gone, today, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Everything is vanity. Everything ends. But this one thing remains. The love of God that was delivered to us through a promise, a covenant. And his name is Yeshua. So I don't know how you guys are doing. I'm seeing it's like people have gone on holiday. <laughs> or perhaps it's just because we've not been live for some time. And I want to repeat again, thank you for praying for me. Thank you. And my prayer is that through this period and this season, we got to learn that not, there's not a single person who's infallible. We have to use our giftings 
as the Bible tells us to use our giftings. One uses a song, one uses a hymn. I'll use a prophecy, but it's just one of the giftings in the house of God. Just by yet another vessel, a saint of God, and all of us are used by the Lord. And he's faithful and he's wonderful. So I want to talk a little bit about Christmas. Thank you for tuning in, by the way. Thanks for checking in and thank you for praying for me. Um, you know, seriously, I, I pray differently now. First of all, the taste of sickness. I have never really had sickness, not one that I'll talk about. So when now I see someone is unwell, I'll stop and truly press in. And I bless God that sometimes that reminder of weakness causes us to be more sensitive and more, you know, carry one another's burdens even more and travail and move with mercy when you see someone who's not well or hear someone is not well. We are resuming um, uh, hospital ministry, by the way. Someone special just logged in and everybody's smiling. That's a secret joke, but she knows herself. <laughs> amen, amen. Woman of God, you should see him. Glowing and smiling all of a sudden. <laughs> now he's blushing. Okay. <laughs> you need to come to Sazo Church to know what we've just talked about. But I love love. Young love is beautiful. And I just can't ignore it. Oh, well. Um, so we are resuming hospital ministry. As I'm leaving work, um, it's one of the things God is very clear. He spoke to me again yesterday and told me, don't wait for a permit. Don't wait for approvals or whatever it is. Just begin to go where I lead you and ask people if you can pray for them. And I said, Lord, yes. I will make it like ward rounds, the way doctors do ward rounds. And allow the healer to use my hands and to use me as a vessel to speak life to people. The Lord caused me to see little babies yesterday struggling with cancer. Mom's getting beat, asking God, where are you? And the Lord said, go. The babies believe. And I will do great and wonderful things that I could see myself recording at some point as we could see people weak all of a sudden and then, you know, as we begin and being healed miraculously. And I know 2018 is going to be a year of great power. A year of great power. A year of great move of God and mercy. But I'm not going to prophesy more about 2018. You've got to come for crossover. And guys, you want to hear what God is saying about 2018. For those who are in Nairobi, for those who are in Kenya, you know you can travel from anywhere, even Tanzania. But there, you know, we had... Uh, somebody from Dar es Salaam come for the Sozo session. That is called hunger for God. Why not fly in just to come and attend our crossover service on the 31st of December? It's an opportunity to visit Kenya if you're not Kenyan. And if you're Kenyan, get that ticket and come home. 31st of December is going to be an amazing day to remember. We'll be at Ufungamano House and we'll be calling on the name of Jesus. And the Lord has told me he's going to speak powerfully into people's lives and into 2018. So come and receive your miracle of the Lord speaking directly into your life and giving you divine direction. <laughs> Amen. So let me talk about um, Christmas. Hmm. So first of all, they've said that Christmas is a pagan holiday. Yes, it's true. In terms of its roots, it began as a pagan holiday. And for sure I know that Jesus was not born on 25th of December. However, as I've prayed about Christmas, one thing God has made clear to me as I learned that it had pagan roots, which was very shocking along the way as I learned that, the Lord Jesus told me something. Just like Valentine's Day is special in terms of that people celebrate love, of course we don't know what kind of love, but for us we can celebrate um, you know, love between a husband and a wife, love between people who are in courtship, but really the devil can't give love. Okay, so my husband and I don't really celebrate Valentine's Day. I guess we're an old couple now. <laughs> but something has to give. I have to get something that tells me it was he remembered me on that day. But we try to kind of make it Valentine's Day all year round. But for Christmas, as much as we make, you know, make it about remembering the, 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 the birth of Jesus Christ every day. And every day for as long as you're born again, we remember that covenant with the Lord Jesus. It's a miracle that the entire world, even those who don't believe, even atheists, actually take a holiday on that day to mark the birth of Jesus Christ. So they may have tried to make it pagan. They may have tried whatever it is. But you know what? Backfired on Satan. Big time. 
So what did he then do? To know that Satan is still trying to fight Christmas and, you know, let me say the birth of Jesus Christ, people turned it into something it's not. It turned into, let me say, giving. Because Christmas is not about giving. As much as it's good to realize that we have received from the Lord and so we give, by the way, if you don't see my mouth moving and you hear a male cough or you hear another kind of cough, don't get scared. <laughs> we have an audience, <laughs> not just the angels and heavenly hosts, you know. We, we have a number of intercessors here and uh, yeah, so you should see that two looks they're being given every time they cough. <laughs> and the faces they are making as they feel a cough coming. I love these guys. So, um... Christmas, part of what Satan has tried to do is to move the world away from, okay, let's start with even moving the world away from the birth of Jesus Christ. But the first thing I would say Satan has done is gotten people not to call Christmas Christmas. And we need to be wise, beloved. Don't call Christmas X mass. X is like Caesar's. So it just talks about a celebration. Mass refers to celebration of many people. But the celebration is about Christ. So have we never thought about, I mean, if you put Christ X, I mean, still that will be spooky because it's like you're saying without Christ or something. But type Christmas. Don't write for people Merry Xmas and buy cards written Merry Xmas. Really? And Happy Holidays. Are we so lazy? And by the way, we're not lazy because we say Happy Holidays. Then when New Year comes, we say, Happy New Year. Why do we do that? We already said Happy Holidays. If the plan was to cover everything, because there are many holidays, say Happy Hanukkah, say uh, uh, Merry Christmas, and say Happy New Year. And to us, a son is born. And to us, and to us a child is born. And to us, a son is given. And you know, I, I'm a mother of four and, and many others beyond that, maybe not born, you know, biologically, but born in the spirit. And I don't know if there's anything more joyful than having a child. And when you get a child, whether it's an adopted child, spiritual child, or birth child, but something just changes. You change. You're not who you are. You know, one of the things for me I've loved to do is to speed. I've always loved speed when driving. It just feels so good. You know, that's been that thrills kind of thing. But when I got my third born, I realized, oh my, there's not just three people, my husband and the two children that are counting on me, that need me alive and need me around, but there's now a third child. And of course, by the time I got a fourth child, I'd reduced. And as much as I enjoy speed, like today I got a chance to drive someone's BMW. Oh my goodness, yes. It was just moving, Joe, you know? And there were no cops. So... <laughs> And there are no people on the road, but it's such a sports car. So anyway, but I'm reminded I have to be responsible. So a child changes your life, and this particular child changed our lives. And the next thing Satan has done, other than get you to say happy holidays or Merry Xmas, or you're having a Christmas party, it's not even your end of year, but you say end of year party instead of saying Christmas party. Because then what do we say? It makes the Muslims feel comfortable, the Hindus feel comfortable. I want to ask you something. When was the last time you heard a Muslim changing the name of their holiday so that you can be comfortable? When was the last time you heard a Hindu changing the name of their holiday or their religion or whatever it is so that you could be comfortable? Don't sell your birthright for a bowl of soup. In this case, the bowl of soup is being liked and people saying you're nice. And by the way, these religions respect other religions. So they'll not have a problem because you said Christmas. In fact, guys, you know what we are doing? We are selling, um, you know, our salvation. And what it's doing is that they are beginning to feel that maybe we're not so confident about this Christ and about this Savior and about this Christianity thing. So they are like, oh, we are really confident about ours. Come along. So that's why we have things like Chris Lamnadis. Just because they put Chris at the bottom without Christ, by the way. Then lamb at the bottom, please notice, it is, anyway, let me not even go there. But we are ending up losing people and they're not finding, 
solutions in their faith because Christ is the only way. Jesus is the answer for the world today, for the world tomorrow. He never runs tired. He never becomes you know, extinct. He never, you know, we never get to the place where this is now 2017, 2018, and so he's irrelevant. He's relevant, even though he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That in itself is a miracle. And so it's critical that we get serious about this issue of celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. So number one, there's nothing wrong with celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. In fact, it's a miracle that the entire world actually celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. I remember going to Dubai around Christmas time. It was even after Christmas because we were like 28th. And they had a Christmas tree and they were saying Merry Christmas even though they are Muslims. That is powerful, guys. They are not saying Merry Xmas. They are not saying Happy Holidays. Although for them, of course, it's a business. In. All right. So, um, in this season, we must pray that Christ may be birthed in the hearts of people. Pray that Christ may be birthed in the hearts of people. Pray that Christ will be born in the hearts of people. It's a powerful season. It's a powerful time as Christmas carols are on and people are worshipping Christ, you know, with the right Christmas carols, of course. There are some Christmas carols that are hidden. But the ones that celebrate Jesus and declare the child has been born, those are godly and taken really from hymn books most of the time. All right? The other thing is, it's great to give, but please focus on declaring that we give because we are given freely. Freely we have received, freely we give. Okay? The next thing I want to talk about is the destruction called Santa Claus. And it's so sad that Christians celebrate Halloween and say, oh, come on, get real. Oh, please. You know? It's just... It's, it's nothing. It's just a little fun. Yeah, Satan would love you to think that. He would love you to think that. What is the point of celebrating the dead? And by celebrating the dead, I'm saying like, you know, we are spooking people and doing graveyards and everything. Just glorifying things that are scary. And God is not scary. Fear is not of God. In fact, the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Fear is not of God. And you can't love and have fear. You can't have faith and have fear. So Halloween, mm -mm. total X. No way. We skip it, we boycott it. Absolutely not. Not a godly holiday. And Thanksgiving, of course, absolutely. I don't know its roots. I can't remember really. But you're giving thanks to God. And you're counting your blessings. There can never be any law against that. Remember what the Bible says in Galatians um, 5, 20, 20, 22 and 23. It talks about the fruits of the spirit and points them out and then it says against these there is no law okay so the other thing is to talk about santa claus yes so we teach our children about santa and we teach our children about um you know father christmas if you want to call him father christmas if you're british or santa claus I'm going to get slowly into the revelation that God gave me in our, gave us in our, uh, our intercessory group this morning. The Lord told me to call this brother in the morning and someone just got caught up and later the guy posted something and I was like, whoa. It was revelation and I understood why God wanted me to call him. I want you to look at Santa. And please note that if you just shift some letters in that word Santa, you actually have Satan. Oh yeah. Same, same words. I mean, we all love to, not all really, I've never done it myself, but people love to, you know, especially the tribalistic kind of people, like to take Raila's name and then twist it into something else which I'll not say because that's so disrespectful. So why won't you, won't we rearrange Santa? And when we rearrange Santa, because San, Satan is actually an enemy. And, you know, this man is not an enemy. He should be respected. But when you rearrange the name Santa, what do you have? You have Satan. And then when you rearrange, not rearrange maybe, but when you say clause, where does clause even come from? And I know some of us, if depending on whether you're into primary or primary, maybe you say Klaus, Santa Claus. But the right pronunciation is clause. What does clause sound like? Yeah. Satan's clause. And how is this Satan's clause? It's Satan's clause by stealing the reason 
for the season. Satan wants us to focus on buying our children things from when they are little to think that Christmas is about getting something new. And you know the interesting thing is, if, when we are little, by the way, us guys in our family, every Christmas we have an auntie, she would actually take us and buy for us clothes. You know, just me and my baby sister. Every single holiday would get new clothes. And then my mom would have to sort out, you know, my elder sister, I think. I don't remember how it worked out. I'd never thought about it. Oh, God, forgive me. Never thought about it. Imagine I never thought about it. Wow. So much repentance to do for our lives. We can be so sinful. But really, through the years, she took us and she would buy for us a new outfit from head to toe. And in the 80s, which is when I grew up, man, a new dress. You'd sleep in it. Because you'd have like one dress only and every Sunday you're in that one dress. Should buy us pumps. Those days are the days that pumps started. So of course you go for mass just a little late. Yeah, me. So you've repented. So you walk in for mass just a little late. And then you step with your pumps. Ka, 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 ka. And then they would roast our hair with a hot comb. And then we would put paper rollers as we grow older. So the next day they are curly and nobody seemed to know how we used to do that. And we had long, beautiful hair. So we'd walk in and the whole, you know, and we're yellow. So the whole village is like, Major's daughters have come in. You know, they could only just look at, eh? they couldn't touch or think even. Because my dad is a former military guy. That time he was military and they knew, you know, you'll be killed. So they wouldn't dare. But even though we went through all that, we knew to celebrate Jesus and even to thank him for those things that we got because we got them because of him. And then love Christmas and the birth of Jesus Christ and the celebrations and of course we did Nyamachoma and we just thanked God a little extra on that day for who he is. And of course we sang a lot of carols and we watched Christmas movies that were not twisted. They had no Santa Claus stories. I don't remember seeing Father Christmas stories. And even though my parents would maybe buy a present, my mom would joke and say, this is from Father Christmas. And then as dad is walking, we say, thanks, Father Christmas. You know, we knew they were from our parents. And, but unfortunately, these days you're told not to tell your children that Santa's not real. Why? Yesterday, my six-year-old was going for a Christmas party. And she says, oh, man. So I asked, what is it? And she said, I just thought, if I find a Santa Claus there, I'm so leaving that party. And that's how she talks. So I'm like, okay, why? So she said, because Santa's evil, wicked. I don't want any Santa Claus. And someone else would go like, how could you? But I said, thank you, Jesus. Because even though I joke about to things like even tooth fairy money, I always tell them, here, they know. I don't go put this gender pillows and say, gee, what, 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 what. Because, you know, they have picked tooth fairy stories. And I tell them, you do know there's no tooth fairy story, yeah? You do know fairies are probably spooky things or whatever it is. But this money is provided by the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can say it came through an angel. But really teaching the children that these things are not true in their lives. If you do not teach the children that there is no Santa Claus, and every Christmas, get the children a present that comes from Santa Claus, the children will love Santa Claus more than they love God. Because you see, God is invisible. His gifts sometimes are not quite visible, especially to children, unless you tell them they're from God. But if they get a gift and it's exactly what they wanted without fail every Christmas for just a little bit, and it's from Santa Claus, your children will worship Santa Claus. They'll go to bed saying, thank you, Santa Claus. Remember, they also taught you have to be a good girl, you have to be a good boy, otherwise they'll put a coal in your sock. Very many parents don't put a coal. But should you put a coal in the sock, you have succeeded in rejecting your child and opening the door of rejection, anger, hate, and God knows what else. Because you're giving a child coal, darkness, black, telling them you're a bad child, you don't do that. Because again, we don't move according to our own ability. Remember, our righteousness is as filthy rags. So you're succeeding in raising children who think that they can earn righteousness and God will give them things based on whether they are good or bad. And so if something bad happens to them, God has sent a call, just like Santa does. And that's if you succeed in not turning Santa into an idol who's actually God and makes more sense because he gets it right. He gives them exactly what they want. 
and it's guaranteed divine date even if it's one one time in a year and yet they keep praying and God doesn't seem to get it because you see God doesn't give us what we want God gives us what we need so this child is praying 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 God doesn't get it done but Santa gets it done I did psychology and um, part of what you learn in psychology is that there's something called conditioning so if you do it over and over getting it right over and over and you're calling this um, conditioning uh, motivational thing about Santa Claus you will succeed in getting your child to uphold Santa as God in a world that people are looking for an idol in a world that people are looking for quick fixes children who get certificates for participation so they don't even know how to wait on God how are you going to teach them to wait on God how are you going to teach them about long suffering which is patience are you going to teach them that there are times that God says no you don't need that and at that point they are thinking how would you know you're not me I need it how do I not need it how, how would you explain to a child that sometimes God may allow for their school fees to delay a little bit just to cause them to be more sensitive and stop laughing at the children who are kicked out of class because of a school fee situation it doesn't mean that God has failed it doesn't mean that he's not Jehovah Jireh but in all things and in all circumstances and in all situations we give thanks for that is the will of God how are you gonna teach your children that God is a good God and it doesn't matter what he does and what he gives so long as you know that God is a good God it's impossible for God to do anything but be good it's impossible for God to do anything that is evil everything the Lord does is good anything the Lord does is wonderful everything the Lord does is beautiful and even if he seems to tarry it's for my good it's for our children's good it's for our good how are you gonna teach the children that if Santa Claus is right on time with exactly what they need so dear ones that I believe is a good reason to forget about the story of Santa Claus and not teach our children that there's any other provider other than Yeshua that there's anyone else who can give a good and perfect gift other than God for every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord above the father of lights He's faithful, he's wonderful. Someone wanted us to talk about a Christmas tree. Well, I, you know, there's a scripture, I think in Isaiah, that talks about pines, that talk about a tree, and it's been used sometimes to say that, you know, the, the, the tree was brought in, and um, if someone could just try and find that for me, about a pine and a tree that was worshipped, oh God. You know, I think it's in Isaiah, Isaiah Jeremiah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, one of those. But he talks about a tree and, you know, um, how it's carved and then it's brought in and it's, you know, like uh, worshipped. But what they're talking about is not, oh, they say it's decorated and some people argue that that's the Christmas tree, but it's not. Because what they're talking about is when you carve an image and make it a god. So I wouldn't say there's anything against a Christmas tree. So long as you don't idolize it. So long as you don't bow before it. In fact, if you get a Christmas tree, it means it just makes family time wonderful because you can go buy one, bring one in. Well, us guys have a plastic one. But we spend time around it just decorating and, you know, telling each other to share something that's good about God and what God has done. And we teach our children that the Christmas tree is just to mark the celebration of Christmas and just the beauty and just saying, you know, God is so good and so wonderful. So to do or not to do, ask the Lord about that. But personally for me, the Lord has not rebuked me about having a Christmas tree. And we use it as a family moment and spend time around together. And, you know, we decorate it together and make it pretty. And, you know, we give gifts and share gifts and presents and just to appreciate one another and love one another. Which we do not limit. The Christmas tree, of course, we can't have all year round. Some years we've had it, some years we haven't had it. And the children don't insist on it or start asking, when are we putting it up or anything. So we haven't told them that it has to be there, which is something we have to be careful to, not to do. But, you know, I grew up also, you know, having a Christmas tree. And it was a wonderful time because it was the one time we all got along in the house without fighting. We never fought at that time. So what I would say is, ask the Lord. You know, ask the Lord. But if you're going to do the decorating and the buying and everything, explain to the children. 
and you know there's the nice smell also of the freshness of the tree but I personally don't believe in spending money every year on Christmas tree to, to, to be honest I think that is wrong I think that money should go to another place somebody who's in need somebody who um, needs something I also don't believe in making too much food and making it excess now last year I learned something about Christmas that I never thought of but I learned from a friend of mine this friend of mine is a widow and she's also an orphan and as I was celebrating and excited we were in South Africa it was fun she wanted to come over and I told her no unfortunately we are out of the country at the moment and she felt so sad and she told me I really felt that if I come to your home we'll celebrate Christmas the right way and we'll have fun together in a godly way and I really wanted to celebrate Christmas with you um, uh, Apostle uh, together with my baby because she's got a, a one child and she wanted a godly family and I really felt bad and she explained to me that Christmas is the most painful time of the year actually I need to reach out to her because now we are around and invite her home and Christmas is a painful time so find somebody who does not have a family find somebody who's bereaved find somebody who's single and invite them for Christmas and make it a beautiful memorable time last year the Lord led me to have a Christmas party for people who had impacted our ministry we can't have it this year for you know the wider team because we've become so many I don't know who to thank who to invite or whatever but we're gonna have it for the immediate ministry team that has stood with us um, through the year um, who are just a few people so but then from my heart to yours this evening I'm a choma Yani it's in my heart I want to give you but you're too many now <laughs> all right and um, let me tell you what God did for me this weekend and why I believe that this is a really special time of the year and like I said I have no doubt Jesus was not born around this time um, he was born at a different time but still it's just like when you have grandmas they don't know when they were born you know our grandmas say they were born in the season of rats or they were born in the season of cows or they were born in the season of degrees you know or drought that's how they know they were born because that's what they were told by their parents they didn't have dates and what do they do we pick a day in the year any day in the year or try to figure out or ask them around which month was this drought or rats and stuff you know <laughs> And they can't figure it out. But they pick a day and we make it their birthday. But we don't know whether they were born on that day. So I hope you can relate to that. Okay? I don't know if in your tradition you do, but in our tradition we do. We have that. But they, Nick, do you guys have that thing of the, the, when someone was born and they say in the season of drought? Okay. So it's an African thing. Okay. Cool. And guys, you can also tell us from your different places. Do you have that? Because I'm asking somebody who's from next door to us, you know? So I would love to know. It, Actually, I've never asked my husband if they have that. And I've never asked our grandmas. I'll ask them this Christmas, but maybe someone can help me, you know. Yeah. So to know, is it an African thing? Jeb, do you guys have that thing? Yeah, born in the season of whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the Kalenjis do have it. I've confirmed the, the Ambians have it. Yeah, so I think that's about it in the house. But yeah, I mean, do you guys have it? Western Kenya, do you guys have it? Oh, Daniela blowing kisses. Oh, missing me already, aren't you, Daniela? <laughs> yeah, so um, that's about the date. So please, let's stop this story of the date. It was at this time. I mean, really? We're celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, remembering him, and, you know, Christ being reborn in our hearts, and we recommit our lives to Christ in this season and thank him. There can be no law against that. Never, ever. So the other thing that I needed to discuss was what? Oh, dear. Okay. Shula Toya, thank you, honey. Luyas do have the same. I think so, because I grew up there, and Luos do. Okay, so it's an African. So, so you guys get it, yeah? So suddenly you're like, boom, I can celebrate Christmas without thinking, am I sinning? Am I not sinning? Yeah? So the other thing um, 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 to say over Christmas time is, I, I don't want to encourage us to have this thing where we go to children's homes only over Christmas. In fact, God told us to do the widow's um, thing in January. You know, January is considered to be a very dry month. People are broke. And by the way, sorry, this is what I was going to say. I thank, oh, oh, sweet Holy Spirit. The Spirit of remembrance. My senior partner as I minister. It's all about him. 
It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. Divine help, guys. We have divine help. And I hope you learn from these sermons in terms of things like when you forget something, he helps, okay, in every situation, including exams, by the way, shopping list, anything, he helps. He's a divine helper. So, um, you know, the, 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 don't overspend. Don't make it a time where you blow money. That is sinful. That is sinful. Don't make it a time when you eat everything and anything. And then, please, go and pay your children's school fees. Buy them uniform. Buy them the books that they need. Then you can celebrate oh, and separate January money to lack in January because you blew it all over Christmas actually shows that you have a bad relationship with money and that you probably have an idolatry situation going because then you don't understand that Jesus was born in a humble situation. He was a carpenter's son and he never blew money and it was never about money and splashing money around. Even when he, did the, when he needed to feed people, he asked the father to fill the baskets. He didn't even ask people, bring somebody, go buy. Mm -mm. That was just the earthly currency. So let's make sure that in our spending, in the things we are doing, we are not doing ridiculous things, you know, that are idolatry and an excuse to sin in that way and wasting food and throwing it and everything. Remember the Muslims, when they have their Ramadan and everything, what do they do? They go and give out. So how about if we did the same? And especially if a Muslim neighbor brought, brought you dates, brought you mandazis and all that, they will receive it. I don't know if they'll eat it, but because maybe it's not being cooked the right way. But you never know anyway, you know. I've got a neighbor whose child, Muslim child, comes to pet our dog and loves the dog and they're not allowed to, you know. So give. If they throw it in the dustbin, you have given. You have spread the love of God and you spread Christianity to let them know this is a special day, but really do it every day, you know, every other day, as opposed to just only on Christmas, at Christmas time. So that's about the extravagance and about, you know, whatever. So make it a, a family time, but not just the family of you, your dad, da, 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 da. If you can ask God who you can invite and who, you know, will be blessed by the invitation, go right ahead, Okay. By the way, oh, yes, I was telling you about what Jesus did for me. So on uh, the day of the social session, I come home. I bless the Lord. I'm tired, you know, but thankful. What a miracle I was able to stand and everything. And then as I'm coming in, there is a gas cooker, a cooker anyway, let me call it a cooker, a new cooker that's just near the door. The old one is there. So I'm confused. I'm like, Okay, why is the cooker here? Is there a problem? Is it spoiled? You know, the way, first of all, you tend to think, my oh, my oh, while I was out there serving the Lord, trouble came over. We will thank God anyway. So I'm like, something wrong with the cooker. So my nanny is looking at me confused. She says, no. So I'm like, so why have you moved it here? Or oh, are you cleaning? Why, why, why is the cooker here at 8 p.m. in the night? Then she says, okay, I just wanted us to fumigate first before I put this one. I'm like, you're confusing me. So I look, I can see my old cooker. Then I look and I can see the new cooker. And I'm like, what's going on? So whose cooker is it? So she starts laughing. She asks, Mama Joanna, Nakwani, Sinyako, Nietu. So I'm like, we're talking happy. She says, hey. You know those ones of, Kwani, you guys don't talk. Mama Joanna, si Baba Joanna, di You know? <laughs> I'm being told my husband bought us a cooker. And I'm confused for like a minute. You know, almost going like, why? So I actually go to the room, like, you know, before I celebrate, eh, I go, I'm like, honey, there's a cooker in the sitting room. What? Eh? She says, yeah, I got you a cooker. I'm like, like, it's mine, it's ours. So he's like, yeah. And before you go far in thinking my husband is so stingy or nasty, the kitchen is my department. So I, I needed to buy a cooker to replace our cooker. It's not particularly spoiled, but I've had it for 17 years, and you know, I wanted to get one that at least the oven is working. My husband never really notices, he doesn't, he's not one of those of Mike Nijiko. In fact, he always tells me, I'd rather you spend time with me than go cook for me, you know? He's not one of those men. And um, so he, he didn't know that the cooker was spoiled, but he felt the need to buy me a cooker. I'm like, oh, honey, you bought me a cooker. And I get so mushy and everything. Then, um, yesterday, so that was Saturday. And I'm still going, oh, have a cooker. I could learn how to bake turkey. Because really, I mean, I've had that cooker for 17 years. I mean, I was a kid. I didn't know those things. And those days I was like, ah, oh, 
you know, bake turkey for who or whatever, you know. So it's become fashionable to bake turkey. So yeah, we're going to be trying it. So um, yeah, if you want to risk my cooking, let me know. We'll consider you. We are taking applications. And we'll ask whether you may come on that day. And I'm just joking, guys. But um, so that was Saturday, gift one. I had not told my husband I wanted to get a cooker. The cooker is not spoiled. And by the way, we are giving away the old cooker. So if you need a cooker, let me know. Um, OK, oh, someone here needs a cooker. Sorry, gone, guys. Taken. Yeah, taken. Taken to Moses. Moses, you have a cooker. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not spoiled. It just cooks slowly, and we are many. All right, cool. So no cooker, guys. No cooker. Yeah, gone, gone, gone. Don't inbox me about cooker. I repeat. <laughs> okay. So then, I actually have another cooker, but it's a little bigger. So if you have a bigger house, yeah, I had a cooker in our nanny school. So if someone needs a cooker and you have a house where a bigger cooker can fit, because that one has like six burners, it's not as good, but yeah. You never know. So let me know. Anyway, um, so yesterday, so Saturday, coming from the Sozo session, and I know God has spoken to my husband, so I thank God for my husband, hallelujah, glory to God, but I know that Jesus is loving me right there through my husband. Now yesterday, a lady comes to see me. She's traveled all the way from Qatar. She's been following us online. And she comes and she says, Apostle, I need you to receive this gift. And it was interesting how she insisted. I was like, this chick knows me. Eh? She knows me. He says, Apostle, I humbly request you, please just receive it. It's small, but just receive it. Well, I really want to get many more small gifts, honestly, if that was small. So I get home. And before I get home, the Lord reminds me of something. No, actually, I didn't get home. Of course, I didn't wait to open it. I didn't like, get home. So I opened it in the car. <laughs> As I'm saying, Holy Spirit, as I open it, will you tell me to give it away? I'm like, I'll give it away. So, <laughs> I tell you this journey. So, I'm listening. Reda, oh, will you? You know, is it mine? So, anyway, I open it. And be actually, before I opened it, as I picked it up to open it, the Holy Spirit gave me a flashback. He told me, this time, last year, you are at Johannesburg Airport, heading to Cape Town. You had bought perfume. You were so excited. And someone stole it. And you've not been able to replace it. And I said, no way. So I said, okay, it's a perfume. Guys, this Jesus is super amazing. Do you know, I opened it like this. It was the exact perfume that I lost. Same day, last year. God remembers even the small things. I remember seeking God and asking him, how? Where were you? I just posted by the way on Facebook saying how your things can never be stolen if you're a tight. Da, da, da. Where were you, Lord? How was my perfume stolen? It was so expensive. God, what happened? And God told me, you are bearing a grudge. Someone by the way had cosseted me, I think two days before. And I was like, those ones are... And since I wasn't preaching, you know, sometimes preaching is helpful because, you know, before I preach, I always take time to allow God to search me. So, see, I'm on holiday mood. Like, this is a man. I'm so upset right now. I'm so pissed off. I can't believe it. God will deal, but just allow me to think about it for a few days and hold on to it for a few days. And that's where I was at. And the devil found that and stole my perfume. And I was never able to replace it. But later as I repented... A lot mostly because we're coming back to Nairobi and I was afraid they'd steal the rest. <laughs> okay, we're such sinful characters, honestly, saved only by grace. But the Lord remembered and the Lord restored a year to the date. He's a sentimental God and He's faithful. He doesn't give us a call. Yeah? He's faithful, even though it looks like we are, He's giving us a call. So we are done with the sermon. Amen. I feel so much joy. I'm telling you, I feel like going la 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 around the room. I'm like, oh, it's so exciting, so wonderful. I feel it's just wonderful talking about Jesus. So beautiful. But this Sheila, Sheila, no, no, this Sheila, you know, I got two Sheilas this year, by the way. Eh? This year I was learning about love. And God sent me two Sheilas, Sheila Toya and Sheila Watele. Oh my. Oh, 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 oh. oh, and then now today God connected me with a Jocelyn. Love. Love wrapped in a box and a bow, you know, amazing, wonderful women. So it's Sheila Tele that I'm going to be seeing. Sheila Toya is a bit far. Sheila Tele, she does not seem to be on. 
How is she not on? Okay, anyway, so I'll be going to her house to learn how to bake. And if anyone else is available... Oh, we have a baker. Yes, okay. So that's me. That's just me being all happy and everything. And I switched off the broadcast. Okay, so I need to read the comments <laughs> and pray for you guys. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. But then this is the mode that I'm in when I'm high on the Holy Spirit. So when you meet me and I'm looking at you like, what? Not really like what, but I'm looking at you calmly and quietly and a bit intimidatingly. Please note, I'm not always like, ah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, so before you come and meet me and get confused. So anyway, I'm looking for bakers to teach me. And we actually have a school, a nanny school. Amen. So someone's having a good laugh. Yeah, because we can bake. Because the man cannot whatever, buying us an oven, and we don't bake for him as much as he has not requested baking. We ask. And remember, I'm going to be Mkenyumbani. Mm, left the job, moving. I think I'm getting a hint as much as he won't say. All right. So, guys, prayer requests. Is there something you'd like us to pray over? Are you unwell? Is someone unwell? We'd like to spend a moment and pray with you. Also, if you'd like to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, okay? So, how much time do we have? We're good? Okay, all right, okay. I'm told we have about 10 minutes. So, I'd like to spend it in prayer, praying for you, praying with you. We will also pray very shortly about... Um, oh, somebody's really angry at me. <laughs> Maybe it's probably the phone that is sending by itself. But really, if you're angry at me, poor Lesada, my dear. Oh, yeah. May the Lord help you. I don't know what I've done. But me, I'm just happy. Oh, yeah. May you receive joy. All right. So, prayer items. I don't know if this gadget is up to date. But, because I kind of delayed a little bit. Is the last comment you're seeing from Noble Jockey? Oh, no. Lona? Lona one boy? Lorna, you're happy, yeah, let's be happy. It's such a wonderful season. And of course, you know, we are breaking early for Christmas. You get a few extra holidays, and the boss still pays, and you get a voucher. It's so cool. Oh, okay, all right, okay. We'll pray for Jeremy's arm, all right? I, okay, all right, cool. We'll pray for Jeremy's arm. Any other prayer item? Guys, are we up to date? I don't know. Okay, you're on big screen, my dear. I'm assuming we are up to date, because now we are at Ginger Bichi Tarus, uh, believing God for a life partner. Amen. All right. Esther Wangoi, pray for me to give my ideas on what to do with my new business. Okay. We're up to date there? I believe so, yeah? Okay, cool. So... <laughs> Lynette, your phone is possessed. Because I was like, surely, how is someone angry at me right now? Aki, your phone. Lynette. Okay, now we know what you need for Christmas. Okay. Then, Sarah. <laughs> Lynette, speak to that phone banner. <laughs> Sarah Kajeru Adaina, business breakthroughs in my real estate business. Guys, you need to come for 31st. God is really speaking about businesses in 2018. Believers' businesses. He's speaking heavily. You can't wait to hear what he has said and the direction he's giving on what you should do to be able to break through in business. It's so simple, but he's saying a lot. Now the business people in the room are like this. <laughs> no, but Jockey says prayer request, divine direction. Okay, so we'll just get ahead with prayer. We're going to pray for our roads. It's, it's really disturbing what's happening with our roads. But guys, you know what has happened? We've let down the intercession wall. We've, we've gotten caught up. People have relaxed. A lot of people are praying for the country. Then when things look like they've relaxed, either guys are bitter, so they are not praying because they are bitter and they are angry and they are unforgiving and everything, and you can't pray in that state of heart because God will even hear you, but you're not going to pray. The devil will walk in. Or others who feel they have won and we are in the government uh, have relaxed. I mean, see, we're in government. And by the way, guys, this nation will only move into what it's supposed to move into. Through prayer. So in that process of letting down the walls and letting down our guard, the enemy has crept in with counterattacks against the nation. That's what we're seeing on the roads. They're counterattacks against the nation. Yeah? So before we lose loved ones, guys, um, you know, let's pray. Don't wait for a loved one to die and wonder why you didn't pray. 
we can stop things from happening because we prayed. Okay? All right. So we'll take time and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we bow at your feet as a church, O God, and a congregation online as well as right here, O Father God. Thank you for every child of God. Father God, even those who have hated, those who have called me names, I thank you for each and every one of them because, Father, anyone who is bought by the blood of Jesus is precious. Precious. So, Father God, bless them and bless them indeed. Protect them and shield them, O God, through this time of Christmas. May not even a hair on their heads be harmed, O God. May no one in their family be harmed, my Father, my God. I ask you, Lord, because, Lord, I know that you hear me. And by the abundant grace and favor you've given me, Lord, I present your church, O oh Father God. And I plead mercy and grace over them, my Father, my King. Lord, I want to pray for each person who is unwell. If someone is unwell, I want you to just put your hand on wherever you are unwell right now. Or lay hands on wherever is unwell. And if you don't, you know... Um, you're not with the person I want you to stretch out your hands and then make time to go and see them and just lay hands on them right now I'm speaking into your hands right now and I'm speaking healing right now oh I feel the Holy Ghost it's already begun even before we pray wonderful Savior thank you for your blood thank you for your blood that's being applied right now to that wound to that sickness my father I speak healing right now, Lord God, and I thank you because even before I finish, people are posting testimonies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, Jesus, be exalted right now in that place where there's a patient, that place where there's someone who's unwell. My Father, my God, even those who are not born again, give us this miracle. That they may know, Lord, I'm your servant, oh God. And that you love them, my God. That they may begin to weep now as you heal them. As your mercy comes upon them with healing. That they may give their lives to Jesus, my God. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah, I see you now. Just moving and touching and healing. Oh God, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command it to live long enough for people to testify that right now at 8.50 p.m. Kenyan time, they were healed supernaturally. Even if they are watching this video later, oh God. Today, the 18th or 17th. 18th of December 2017 at 8.50 p.m. Kenyan time healing descended and this shall never be disputed. Some will watch this video later wondering and you lead them to it Lord and they will connect the sudden heat that they felt and the instant healing that came upon them even in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. Guys, if you're wounded or there's something that you could not do, begin to do it now. Begin to do it now. Get up, stand up, begin to do it now and begin to praise God. If you feel an, a winds of pain, rebuke it in the name of Jesus and do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Jesus laid hands on people twice, thrice. Just do it. Just do it. There's someone who's been having an eye issue. I'm just feeling some pain in my eyes. I know God is healing someone's eyes right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just begin to do it. Begin to do it. Hallelujah. If you had a problem with your hand, you could not move it without pain. Just begin to move that hand. If you could not touch your toes or bend because your back was giving you trouble, just bend right now and let the Lord heal you. Let the Lord touch you. If you could not move your shoulder, just begin to move. Begin to move if there's something you could not do just do it right now and let the lord perform this miracle upon you in the name of jesus christ our lord and king we're going to pray for the other needs don't worry we're just ministering to the sick whether it has manifested or not it is done in heaven and earth must show it forth in the name of jesus christ i break every generational curse that is coming right on time to claim you and bring sickness upon you whatever satan is using to accusing the courtrooms of heaven right 
right now I declare that the chief advocate who is our Lord Jesus Christ he is speaking a different thing the blood of Jesus is speaking a different thing in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ we speak healing right now by the name of Yeshua HaMashiach the Lord our Savior hallelujah glory be to the name of the Lord I know people have been healed I know it's already happened you just need to believe you just need to believe and guys if you've been healed and you feel like you need to go to another person to be prayed for be careful because that's how backsliding happens that's how divine has placed things on you believe that God has healed you and if he tries to manifest again because Satan sometimes doesn't just give up believe hallelujah someone's been healed right here glory to God no pain thank you Jesus thank you Jesus guys Jesus heals and he does it but the problem with us is that if he tries to manifest again we tend to go say oh let me find someone else but if it is a little bit it means you're on to something so continue in praise continue to bless the Lord continue to oh hallelujah someone's hand is being pulled around just to confirm that they're not pretending <laughs> I thank God for prayer warriors. I could not pretend. I could not pretend they are being pulled <laughs> to confirm whether they are wins. <laughs> no fake miracles. Hallelujah. Is it confirmed? Healed. <laughs> I'm telling you, I could not And we're not in front of cameras, but I didn't need to tell you that. But they're just confirming. Hallelujah. Lord Jehovah, we thank you for the one who's asking for a life partner. We thank you for the ones who are praying for business breakthroughs. We thank you for the ones who are praying for divine direction in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. We thank you for Lydia who's asking for provision, oh my father, my king. We pray for, thank you for Kano, I'm so sorry, Nicole, that name is so hard. Um, I, Lord, that is asking for peace in her heart, oh God. If you're not born again, Nicole, peace comes only from Jesus. It can come from nowhere else. Lord, I thank you for Lynette and we trust you for a new phone for her in the name of Jesus Christ. A really cool phone, Father, where she'll have to pray and ask you not to let her be proud, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, oh God. For Lorna, she's saying, Lord, she needs you to come through, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Samuel's internet is refusing. Lord, we rebuke it and any other internet in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm just feeling I need to name people by name. Was this Kevi Baya? Like I didn't mention, it doesn't have effect and there is power in naming somebody. Lillian, Lord, remember her business, oh my Father, my God, as she divinely waits for your appointment, my Father, my King. Noble Jockey is trusting you, Lord, for divine direction, my God. You can see it, oh Father God. Oh my Father, that is your special. Speciality, Lord. She, she could go for direction anywhere else, Lord, but she says she wants you to direct her. Oh, Father, may your child's ears be so clear to your voice and may you confirm it through another. Sarah Kajeru is trusting God for a business breakthrough in her real estate business. Hallelujah. Lord, bring a tenant. God, give me a tenant too. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, an oversell of those houses, an overrent of those houses in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Lord, in this salon, is trusting you, oh God, for her dad, oh Lord, and healing. Thank you, we've prayed for healing, hallelujah. Receive it in the salon, just go and lay hands on your dad and say, I have divine direction from the Lord to lay hands, and you are healed, daddy, you are healed. Do it, don't be afraid in the salon. There's an anointing that we've just spoken and tapped to you. God had already given it anyway because it says we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But for the sake of faith, believe that we have agreed with you and the Lord has released divine anointing upon those hands. Go do it and that is going to be healed. Hallelujah. And what rejoicing there shall be in the family. Glory to God. If they are far, just call them on the phone and just begin to say, Daddy, I'm releasing uh, a blessing upon you. Even if they're not born again, that's how they'll get born again. Don't be afraid. Okay. Uh, Jane, Lord is trusting you for a spouse. Father God, you know where that man is. Uh, make a way where there seems to be no way, oh God. Esther is asking for idea, divine ideas. Esther, worship Jesus. When you worship Jesus, he gives you divine ideas. I have six business ideas that I've gotten just from worshiping the Lord. And normally they break through, even in a difficult business environment as I hear, because God is not controlled by the economy of us. So long as you give to him and give to his kingdom and honor him through your business, and you don't pay bribes and do funny things, and you pay your taxes, of course. Don't do funny things, don't mistreat your workers. Yeah? Amen, amen. Esther Wangoi, I asked God to give me ideas of business, and he reminded me that I quit Java two years ago to start baking, but I haven't been able to today. I got a store. Woo! 
bakers. And now I'm like, okay, where do I start? <laughs> so the six burner, it's yours, honey. It's yours. Though I don't think the oven's working, though. <sighs> yeah, but you can come pick it. If you can find someone to sort it out, honey, it's yours. And we've used it for ministry. So it has an anointing on it. And it's been sitting and I've been asking God who wants, who, who should get it. So yes, absolutely. Pick it up, darling. Pick it up, Esther Wangoi. Let me know how, how you'd like to pick it up. Our number is um, on the screen. 0799190010. So it's yours, Esther. It's yours. It's you we've been keeping it for. Hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, okay. 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 There we go. Glory to God. Okay. Um, if you had asked for the cooker earlier, sorry, it wasn't yours because I saw Esther first. Amen. Let's just um, give thanks. Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your loving mercy. Your unfailing kindness. Oh, Father. Oh, God. The way you love us, God, is just astounding. Won't you help us, Lord, to have a revelation of that love and to believe it? that would see you, Lord, in the smallest of things, O oh God. And that, Lord, in answer to that love and receiving that love, because, Lord, as human beings, we need grace, depending on where you're at and what you've been through, we need grace to receive it. Because some people don't even know how to receive love. That, Father, we would honor you, love you, through the fire, through the storm, in the valley, in the cave, no matter what happens, Lord, may we just love you. May 2018 be about you raising up a people that love you not for what you do, not for what you give them, but for who you are. Lord, we love you. Oh, Daddy, you've brought us such a mighty long way. Thank you for how you love us, Lord. No one loves us like you. Father, may anyone who's watching this broadcast and wondering what I'm on about keeps wondering about the tears, wondering if I'm putting up a show, oh God, or acting. God, may you roll over the stone that has covered their hearts and locked them in a tomb like Lazarus. And may they very soon feel this love, know this love, and say, so this is what she's on about. Because God, it's a tragedy to go through life. And not know this. Oh, Jesus. Thank you that you helped me to hold on. And I wanted to give up. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that it is to know you. And to serve the King of Kings, my God, my God. I don't serve an earthly king because I'm not good enough. But I'm good enough for the King of Kings, my God. What a privilege. What a privilege. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Father, would you provide for people for Christmas and even for school fees, oh God, that no one would lack, Lord, that no one would feel bad as I see people celebrating and they have nothing. And guys, if you're looking for school fees for your child, if you're looking for uniform for your child, I don't know how we'll do it or if we'll even be able to do it, but just let me know. Let me know and online audience, one of the things I've asked you to do um, together with the church is as we are planning to fast in January, the 21 days, send in the money for your meals for the 21 days. If your children are fasting, they're big enough to fast, the budget is bigger. And you know the temptation yesterday, as I sent, because I decided to send the money to a different place, um, is that the Lord was telling me, mm -mm, that's a lot. Remember, you'll be at work. And, you know, you, the place of work is, they provide lunch and everything. I said, devil, no. I'm sending this amount of money because 
I know myself I would be doing takeaway and all that. So I forwarded to my ministry assistant and I said to her, um, I received 5,000 from someone who also told me the same thing, that she struggled and the devil was trying to tell her it's too much, send a bit and then send a bit later, but she knows that would be the cost of the meal that she'd be having as the Lord gave her the figure. And we put together a, a total of 15,000 and I forwarded it to the ministry assistant. Because the Lord is saying to us on the 21 days that we are fasting in the month of January, Fasting, the most powerful fast, is where you deny yourself food to seek the face of God, not to ask him to give you stuff because it's not nasty like that. Um, but you're seeking his face and saying, God, how may I honor you? How may I serve you? Give me divine direction. Change me. Transform me. You know, circumcise my flesh. So instead of it being a saving, after all, you know, January, like, yeah, move it to a budget that you forward to the Benevolence Fund. So the, photo, the number is on the 0799199. 0010. So if you forward that money for the budget, when you forward that money for the budget, please send us a note and just say, I've just sent you money for the benevolence fund. Okay? So that we don't mix it with tithes and offerings. And we have an overflow. Who we'll pays school fees for people? We'll assess the need, of course. But we will pay school fees for people, which will go directly to the schools, buy uniform for people and everything. Let's see what God does. Let's see what God does, guys. Let's see what our fasting does in terms of changing how we fast. That we don't just save, we actually give away as we fast, whatever we have eaten on those 21 days. Someone may want to ask at this point, what kind of a fast are we doing? We're starting by the day on 2nd of January to 23rd, I think that is 21 days. And it's fasting from midnight and we break at 6 p.m. But if God gives you grace not to have anything at all, any solid at all during that time, which I'm believing God that I'll be able to do, we will be on, on uh, you know, water. By the way, you won't die if you take water only, but it depends also on your activity. You see, for me in January, I'm slowing down because I've left my job, and so I'm going to be able to control my activity, okay? So I've tried doing it while working. I couldn't do it. Day 14, I was collapsing, yeah? So, but if you're at home, if you're available... Then we meet together. I'll, I'll, I'll trust the Lord that we're able to gather together so that we can pray together. But depending on what it is that you're fasting, at least there'll be breakfast, there'll be lunch. What is the total cost of your budget for breakfast and lunch for 21 days? Let's give it away. Let's not save it. Please send it through. And on our side, we assure you, we will move it to those who are in need that the Lord may bless, that the Lord may do. And remember, the Bible says, when you give to the poor, you lend to God. And trust me, I have four children. I would never dare to try and touch it or move it. As you've heard, I'm forwarding it to the ministry assistant, who's very trustworthy, by the way. And we'll put it together and just give it away and ensure that it goes to the benevolent fund. If we have an abundance beyond that, we are planning to use it for um, the, the often, uh, what is it called, um, the children's home that we are setting up as well, but it will all go to the Benevolent Fund. We're also planning to have a baby rescue. Um, we're setting up a baby rescue center, so it will go to that as well. But I assure you, it will go to all things benevolence. Amen. God bless you guys. And if you know someone, there's someone who contacted me about someone in Kibera, we'll be uniting with them to just go and help. I believe there'll be school fee situations there that we can help out with. So, yeah, we'll be going to Kibera as well as Barut. It depends on how much money the Lord uh, makes away for. Um, yeah. Amen. God bless you. We love you guys. And thank you for watching. I don't know if anybody wanted to give their lives to Christ. I, if they did, I missed it. I've not seen anything. Sorry, let me just give it a check. It says someone said they wanted to give their life to Christ. And you can always also text that phone number to say you want to give your life to Christ. And we will pray with you. Amen. 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 Let's honor the Lord, guys. Amen. Shalom. Thank you for watching and Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord.